everybody, I'm Dean Hempthorn with Bicycle World TV. And you know, the world of cycling is filled with heritage stories out of Europe, brands that have been around 100 years. And then it was followed up by the American heritage, where we have our own royalty in bike building. But this story is not about a heritage brand. In fact, it's a brand built by a very accomplished professional racer back in the 80s and 90s who's got passion, who understands how bikes are built. He's very technologically savvy. And he started his own heritage back in, uh, in the 90s, building his own bike. That builder, his name is Maurizio Fondrius. He was a 69-time winner in the Pro Tour in his day in the late 80s and 90s. He won stages in the Tour de France, in the Giro Italia. He won the Milan San Remo. He's been multiple-time world champion. The guy knows bikes. And this bike right here, the Fondrius TF2 1.0, is the bike that we're testing today. The Fondrius TF2 is the middle of the Fondrius lineup. And it's only the middle because the build group that is on the higher end bike is the Campy Record uh, super, super dollar bike. Price point wise, this is their middle, middle bike and it's everything you could want on a bike. Starting off, the, let's look at the, the sex appeal, the curb appeal I call it of a bike. You walk into a store, you look at a bike and you go, man, is that thing good looking? Or do I want to go on to the next thing? This thing screams Italian. It says sexy, it says fast, it says swoopy lines. It's got it going on. There's nothing stock on this bike. And this is not a bike where a pro takes his name, slaps on a Chinese frame, and says, here, let me sell it. This was built and dev developed and designed from the ground up. Maurizio used the, the latest technology, uh, the modern production methods, and again, infused it with old school know-how and how to ride to build this bike. And it's storied is that this is Maurizio's favorite bike in the lineup because of its versatility. You can do everything with it. So let's talk about the spec first, and then I'll tell you how it rode. First of all, the bike weighs in at 16.5 pounds, complete as it is. It comes with a Campy Athena 11-speed electronic shifting, Campy uh, power torque cranks, Ursus wheels, Sele SMP saddle, and an FSA um, cockpit in the stem and bars. This bike is carbon all the way. It's all made in Italy, apart from the FSA product, and it's made with the most impeccable materials on the planet. 3K weave, um, a 4K, a special 4K application weave and resin bond to give it certain uh, properties in vertical and horizontal compliance and stiffness. How does it all work together? Well, it works great. Starting with the, the Campy Athena 11 speed electronic shifting. One of the things you're going to figure out here is that you no longer have to come over and tap the brake a whole bunch of times, excuse me, the brake, the shifter a whole bunch of times to get it to shift. You now simply hold, very light touch, hold it in, and it'll climb 11 speeds up, it'll climb 11 speeds back down, however you want to do it, wherever you're at, just like that. It doesn't throw a chain. One of the things that was awesome about this bike and the Campy Grupo is that it always stayed in tune, it never missed a shift, it was dead silent, and it was super quick way faster than I could shift personally. I think that's a huge benefit, especially for the Cat 1s, Pros, those sorts of guys. Great benefits to that. It has Campy Holotech cranks, which matched up with the whole um, the group set, and it's got a proprietary Campy bottom bracket. We didn't have any problem setting up the shifting. It came actually in a box already set up for us, so we don't uh, we can't really give you much of a feedback on what it was like to set that up. But we did learn that you need a special tool to remove your crank set. So your team or your local bike store should be able to help you with that. Um, if you're one of your, your uh, do-it-yourself mechanic at home, you might want to look into what tool that takes to make that happen. Speaking of the charge of the battery, we tried to deliberately run this battery down to see what happened when you ran out of battery, and we didn't do it. We did ride the bike for probably close to a thousand miles and we let it go almost two weeks without charging the battery. There was absolutely no loss of power whatsoever. The bike shifted fine. We did notice a very slight slowing down of the shifting when the, it got toward the bottom but it never quit shifting and it was still very fast. It just wasn't as fast as it does with a full charge. So how does it ride? Well, the first thing you're going to know when we get on this bike is how incredibly smooth this thing is. This is the smoothest bike I've ever been on. It kind of feels like you're cheating because it takes bad roads, it takes fissures, it takes cracks, and it takes them out of the equation. It even, it just dampens all the micro vibrations, and that's what wears down a rider after three, four hours in the saddle, you start getting, you start getting fatigued. This has none of that. All the micro vibrations are gone, and again, the smoothest roads 
is everything that you're riding. It's phenomenal. We think all this performance and this smooth ride is really, it comes from a knowledge of how to, how to manipulate materials. Everybody out there makes a carbon bike these days, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be a good bike. It doesn't mean it's gonna be a smooth ride. It doesn't mean it's gonna be a fast accelerator, or a good climb, or a corner. It just means it's carbon. But Maurizio understands technology, he understands how to apply it, and he has smart people working in his group there. This bike is going to be a game changer for the Grand Fondo riders and the Century riders. You can sit on this bike all day long and be happy as a clam. If you're one of those guys that likes to descend, you're going to eat this bike up. And First of all, we talk about the swoopy lines. This bike has this, the reverse bent fork. It's got a one and a half inch tapered head tube that's all custom designed. It's got um, a nice arc on the top tube. It's also a semi box tube. Uh, which helps him achieve those vertical, the compliance characteristics that he wanted built in the bike. It's got a semi-box down tube, which is oversized, large, it's probably really thin material. Um, it's got a, a scalloped C-tube, if you will, and it's got a beautiful um, arrow wing-shaped, very arrow um, C-tube. All those things scream Italian. It's the burly front end here that you've got with the beautiful fork, the beautiful one, excuse me, the beautiful fork, the beautiful one and a half inch head tube that make this such a stable ride. In fact, after you get over the fact how smooth the ride is and you get out and you start riding, you're doing your climbing, you're descending, you point this thing downhill and the faster you go, the smoother and the more stable it becomes. We've hit speeds of about 45 miles an hour on this bike and you could actually steer it with one hand on the, on the handlebars, it's that good. It may not be the quickest handling bike, but it does do high speed calculated turns incredibly well. So it may not be your first um, reach if you're looking for a crit bike, but it's gonna perform admirably in that situation as well. It just seems to be better suited for the big carving high speed turns, which is really a blast. It really sticks to the road. When the roads go flat and you need to spin it up to speed, the bike gets up to speed without any problem and it holds speed just fine. One of the things that we did find was in the acceleration, if you're getting into just a big sprint, I think the wheels might have been holding it back a little bit from the acceleration. That when you stand on this bike to accelerate, the bike, when it starts to lean over, there's no flex and you don't feel side flex in the wheel, you don't feel in the bottom bracket whatsoever. It's a stiff bike, but it doesn't launch out as fast as I had hoped it would. And I think that's due to the wheels, just the lacing of the wheel and the way it spins up. I would have loved to have tested this bike with a high dollar set of carbon wheels. But being a campy build, I didn't have a set of those laying around. So we tested it just the way it was and it was just great. When the road starts to go uphill, the bike is an adequate climber. I don't know if it's a rocket ship, but it's actually a good climber. The SMP saddle makes it very comfortable to ride and it'll go uphill with no problems. We actually had a couple of pro riders ride this for us as well, giving their initial input, who I can't name, but they thought it'd be a great climber as well. This complete bike as tested was $6,700. If you wanted just a fork and frame set, it was for, you can have that for $3,380. Not a bad price, a little bit high maybe on the mid-range scale, but this bike gives up nothing. The only thing that um, could be higher is going with a campy record 11-speed uh, electronic shifting. Is there room for improvement on this bike? Well, we think there is in a couple of spots. First of all, I don't believe this bike was actually designed to have electronic shifting on it, and that is because of the battery placement. The battery placement is right into that feed zone where food water, cokes, whatever you're drinking falls right down there. It's in a very vulnerable spot. Although it is completely sealed, it's weatherproof, I'm sure it'll take the abuse. I still didn't like it being right there. And as arrow as the seat post is, it is a proprietary design and it has its own proprietary clamp. Also, it is a zero offset seat post, so people that are having problems getting their bike fitted because they need a big offset might have a little bit of issue with that. Something you're gonna wanna look at. Suggestions for an upgrade? I would actually buy this bike and I would spec it with my favorite high-end cable actuated shifting system. Now I know everybody's going electronic, but this just didn't quite win me over. It worked fabulously. There was no flaws in it whatsoever. I'm just kind of an old school guy. I don't mind shifting the bike a little bit. I'm also not a Cat 1 racer, which I think this would be the biggest benefit for. You can save yourself a half a pound because you get rid of a battery and you can work on it yourself. The wheels. While these wheels for aluminum clinchers feel great, they're probably one of the best feeling aluminum wheels we've ridden. I think, like I said, they might have caused a little bit uh, of sluggishness in the acceleration. I love some of the carbon wheels that are out there that are the same price. These are a great weight at about 1,550 grams a set, but I'd probably upgrade the wheels a little bit to a little bit higher end carbon road wheel as well.
What is this bike made for? This is made for a rider who wants style and comfort, who wants performance, and who loves riding boutique brands. This bike is not one of those bikes you're going to see in every weekend ride Peloton. You're going to be unique with it, especially with the 13 color combinations. If you enjoy the finer things, the Italian made, Italian wheels, Italian saddle, Italian bike frame, everything, you're going to love this bike, especially if you're doing long, you love doing long rides, grand finals and centuries.